Greetings, this is Dr. Sandra Cabot. This video is about parasites that affect humans. The liver is an attractive destination for many parasites. The liver is an immunotolerant organ and thus is an easy place for parasites to hide from the immune system. Parasites have a large range in size. Injury to the person infected by parasites can vary from minimal to lethal. Parasites can inhabit the liver or pass through the liver during their normal development and can cause destruction of liver tissue. Parasites in the liver and gut cause significant global disease and death as they can lead to gallbladder disease, liver cirrhosis, liver failure and some types of cancer. I have made four videos on parasites as it's a big subject. Let's look at some types of parasites that infect humans and how you and your doctor can detect if you are infected. We will also discuss how you can effectively treat parasites before they destroy your health. Let's start with protozoa parasites. Protozoa are one-celled organisms that are bigger than bacteria and contain a nucleus and other cell structures, making them more like plant and animal cells. There are several protozoa parasites that can affect the liver. Let's start with Leishmania parasites. Leishmania parasites live inside liver cells known as Kupfer cells. These parasites are spread by the bite of infected sand flies. There are different forms of leishmaniasis in people. Cutaneous leishmaniasis causes skin sores and ulcers. It can also cause destruction of mucous membranes in the mouth, throat and nose. Visceral leishmaniasis affects internal organs, usually the spleen, liver and bone marrow. Some people have a silent infection without any symptoms or signs. People who develop symptoms of infection usually have fever, weight loss and enlargement or swelling of the spleen and liver. They may have abnormal blood tests showing low blood counts, including a low red blood cell count, known as anemia, a low white blood cell count, and a low platelet count. How can you know if you are infected with Leishmania parasites? Blood tests that detect antibody to the parasite, an immune response, can be helpful for cases of visceral leishmaniasis. Tissue specimens can be taken and examined for the parasite under a microscope. These specimens are taken from skin sores or from bone marrow. Where is leishmaniasis found? Leishmaniasis is found in areas of the tropics, subtropics, and southern Europe. Cutaneous leishmaniasis causes skin lesions, usually deep ulcers, which can leave lifelong scars. About 95% of cutaneous leishmaniasis occur in the Americas, the Mediterranean Basin, the Middle East, and Central Asia. What can you do to prevent infection? No vaccines or drugs to prevent infection are available. The best way 
for travellers to prevent infection is to protect themselves from sand fly bites. To decrease the risk of being bitten by sand flies, follow preventative measures. If you are in a high risk area, reduce outdoor activities from dusk to dawn when sand flies are the most active. When outdoors or in unprotected quarters, reduce the amount of uncovered skin. Wear long sleeve shirts, long pants and socks. Apply insect repellent to the exposed skin and under the ends of sleeves and pant legs. The most effective repellents generally are those that contain the chemical DEET. When indoors, stay in well screened or air conditioned areas. Sand flies are much smaller than mosquitoes and therefore can get through smaller holes. Spray living and sleeping areas with an insecticide to kill insects. If you are not sleeping in a well screened or air conditioned area, use a bed net and tuck it under your mattress. If possible, use a bed net that has been soaked in or sprayed with pyrethroid containing insecticide. The same treatment can be applied to screens, curtains, sheets and clothing. Drugs to treat leishmaniasis. Pentostam has been the drug of choice for the treatment of cutaneous leishmaniasis in the United States. Pentostam is also effective against visceral leishmaniasis and is often the first line treatment worldwide. Newer drugs such as liposomal amphotericin offer hope, especially in the single day treatment protocol but need to be tested in different Leishmania endemic localities. The drug paramamycin was effective in India, but was not effective in East Africa, which indicates there are multiple factors, such as parasite resistance to drugs, which need to be evaluated in different countries. Miltefacine is a promising drug for leishmaniasis. It is critical that the few new drugs that are available are not overprescribed for other infections. They should be protected and not used in ways that would enhance the development of parasite resistance to these drugs. Globally, leishmaniasis is among the top 10 neglected tropical diseases with 350 million people at risk of infection. Let's look at another protozoa parasite. This one's called Entamoeba histolytica. Entamoeba histolytica is a parasitic protozoa which can live in the body outside of cells and infects the intestines in humans. Entamoeba histolytica is found worldwide and around 10% of the population are infected in highly endemic areas. Infection is acquired by ingestion of entamoeba cysts in contaminated water or food or by fecal oral contact. Amoebiasis is a common cause of diarrhea in infants and adults in poor countries and is an emerging sexually transmitted infection in some countries where safe sex is not practiced. Infection symptoms may vary from none to irritable bowel syndrome or diarrhea. In chronic infection, one or more amoebic abscesses may develop in the liver. What are the tests for entamoeba? To test for infection with entamoeba histolytica parasites, 
faeces tests are done for the parasite antigen or DNA in a stool specimen. This is called a PCR test. A blood test for antibodies, which are the immune response against the entamoeba parasite, can also be done. Treatment of entamoeba infection. Paromamycin and diloxonide furoate are the drugs recommended for the treatment of entamoeba histolytica infection in people with no symptoms or only mild symptoms. In patients with more severe symptoms, the drugs metronidazole, tinidazole, ornidazole and nitazoxanide are effective and safe. Let's look at some other protozoan parasites. Giardia is a protozoan parasitic microorganism that infects the small intestine, often causing diarrhea. In the United States of America, Giardia infection is the most common intestinal parasitic disease, affecting more than 1 million people annually. There are over 500,000 cases of Giardias in Australia each year and more than 280 million cases worldwide. Several drugs can be used to successfully treat Giardia infection. These include metronidazole, tinidazole, nitazoxanide, paramomycin, quinacrine and furazolidine. Malaria. Malaria is the most significant of the protozoan parasites that infect humans and is transmitted by mosquito bites. Malaria is endemic in tropical and subtropical regions of the world. Over 3 billion people are at risk from malaria and it causes between 600,000 and 1.1 million deaths annually. My videos on parasites do not cover all parasites as it is a huge subject. Rather, these videos are designed to make you more aware of the widespread problem of disease caused by parasites and how you can reduce your risk of infection and effectively treat them. If you want to learn more academic information about parasitic diseases, I recommend you follow Maureen Richards on YouTube. Her excellent videos are enlightening. Maureen is the Assistant Dean of Medical Education and Evaluation, Clinical Associate Professor of Health Science Education at the University of Illinois College of Medicine. In summary, almost all parasitic diseases count as food and waterborne diseases. Therefore, long-term control requires an integrated approach combining early diagnosis by educating doctors, individual treatment, public health measures, food chain safety and animal health interventions for diseases with animal reservoirs. Although parasites cause a significant global burden of disease, treatment is usually very effective. Vaccines are not expected to be available soon. Awareness, prevention and early recognition and treatment are the keys to success. So here's some final tips. Wash your hands thoroughly with hot soapy water as this kills most germs, including parasites. This is so important after handling animals and soil and before handling or eating food. Boil your drinking water. If you have persistent symptoms of irritable bowel or unexplained symptoms of poor health, have your faeces checked for parasites. You may get a surprise. 
So I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have, please click like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, email us from our website liverdoctor.com. Thanks for listening.